Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, December 20th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, this morning I was going over the locks in one of my honeypots and saw a log entry that we don't really see much in our general logs from all of our other honeypots, but this particular honeypot got hit pretty strongly for this one URL. And that URL was essentially the OpenID configuration file, a commonly exposed file. So it's not a file that's supposed to be secret on servers that run OpenID. And I was wondering a little bit, why did this happen? Well, it turns out that in this particular case, it was actually related to Citrix leak. And I didn't know this is originally when I posted it. So I really just posted as a question what this URL is about. Dustin Decker was nice enough to point out that this is related to Citrix Fleet the vulnerability that does allow an attacker to essentially read memory from Citrix servers. Citrix bleed, I think I covered it a couple times before, but the way the attack works is that an attacker has to hit one of these specific URLs and provide an overly large host name. In that case, the exploit works a little bit similar to what we had with Heartbleed, that the random memory is being dumped back to the attacker, that memory may include things like uh, cookie information with session IDs that can then be used to take over the instance of Citrix if a user with the right privileges was logged in. And uh, just as a side note here, this vulnerability is actively being exploited. Comcast just announced a breach and apparently Citrix Bleed was one of the ways how they were able to penetrate Comcast's network. Interestingly, all the four IP addresses that I saw scanning pretty hard for this vulnerability are hosted by the same hosting company, Xhost. The company is registered in Britain, but looks like two of the IP addresses are located in the Netherlands, the other to either Finland or Russia. That's a little bit unclear from sort of routing and trace route information. And then we do have an interesting attack against SSH. SSH, of course, a critically important protocol and consider one of the more secure ways how you remotely access a system. Well, uh, the problem here is that during the initial handshake, as the two sites uh, negotiate various uh, encryption options and such, there are extended info messages that are being exchanged and an attacker is able to block these messages, replace them with an ignore message in order to not uh, cause any issues with TCP and missing sequence numbers and such. And in doing so, the attacker is then able to inject their own data into a connection or also read data that's being exchanged as part of the connection, essentially invalidating sort of the reason we do have SSH in order to provide a strongly encrypted and authenticated uh, connection for our uh, data. In order to launch the attack, the attacker must be able to intercept the connection, but well, that's exactly why we do use SSH because this is a possibility. This prefix truncation attack was developed by three researchers at the uh, Ruhr University in Bochum, and it does particular affect how the ChaCha20 Poly 1305 cipher is being integrated in SSH. So not a problem with the cipher itself, as they point out in the paper, but a problem with how this particular cipher is used as part of SSH. Now, right now, there isn't really sort of a simple patch available uh, for uh, this issue. The simplest countermeasure is not to use ChaCha20. Suggested safe ciphers are ASGCM or ASCTR. 
This can easily be done with your client configuration on a Unix system in your .sh config file. You can essentially configure it to only use a specific cipher. That's probably the simplest method to fix the problem. Same on your servers. You can also limit the ciphers that are being accepted. I suggest you at least evaluate the risk to environment before you leave for the holidays, if possible, reduce the number of allowed ciphers. That's not a terribly difficult fix. Just there's a risk here that of course you end up uh, with incompatible ciphers and uh, then you can no longer connect. So do some testing before you actually make the change. Also a little side note here, SSH3 is coming. SSH3 is the SSH protocol over Quick because these days, well, everything is running over Quick. And then a little bit good news, the US Justice Department announced that they disrupted the Black Cat ransomware. They not only shut down the site that uh, listed all the victims and such, but they were also able to recover encryption keys and created a decryptor around it. So if you have files that were encrypted by Alf V or Black Cat, well, you do have a solution now in order to recover your data. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.